Welcome everybody. My name is Jeff Green. I'm the president of the Green Team Home Selling System and I thank you for joining us for October 2018 housing market update. Um, before I introduce our panel, I just want to give a little pitch for all these people standing behind me holding their arms up static. They're, they're getting tired here. So <laughs> we're running a, uh, a camp, an initiative, hope.greenteamhq.com. We are raising money and awareness for mental illness this month. October is Mental Illness Awareness Month. And we're trying to help out doing our part locally here. So by all means, check us out at hope.greenteamhq.com and maybe consider making a donation. So let's introduce our panel. When I call your name, just wave your hand. Pam Zakowski, we'll start with you. Pam is one of our sales associates for Green Team New Jersey Realty in our Vernon office. Pam, thanks for being here. Jackie Krasuski, uh, she is a sales associate in our Warwick office for the Green Team Home Selling System. Matt Zadroga uh, is not able to be seen. He's dialing in. He is uh, the sales manager for MBS Highway. He's going to give us some perspective on the bond markets and also a mortgage rate, so on and so forth. There's been a lot of turbulence there in the last few weeks, which is leading to some interesting things that are happening in the housing market. So we're going to check in with Matt a little bit later. Karen Gonin from Green Team New Jersey Realty. Welcome, Karen. Thanks for being here. She is also a sales associate. And uh, also Allison Miller from Green Team New Jersey Realty. Three Green Team New Jersey Realty sales associates on one call. It's just too much. I don't know how to handle it. So <laughs> we're going to do the best we can. And of course, Melissa Brissett, behind the scenes, our producer for these uh, webinars. Thanks for being here, Melissa. All right. So I'm going to jump right in here. We're going to get into some stats because there's a lot to talk about this month as things seem to be shifting. Yes, things seem to be shifting in the housing market. So let's get a, a national perspective first and just take a look at what I consider to be the, the mother's milk of the whole thing, which is how many homes are selling. And this is a nice chart that just shows us year over year. 2018 is the dark blue. Um, 2017 is the light blue. So you can see it's been a mixed bag this year. You know, we talked about that last month. And this past month was, call it even, uh, 580 versus 589. Uh, back in August. So, um, you know, we're waiting still to see September's numbers. It takes the NAR and these national, you know, uh, syndicates of information to get the info out. So we'll bring that to you next month. Um, but needless to say, things are not increasing uh, as they were last year, year over year. Um, this is always something that we've been looking at. It's an interesting analytic here. Foot traffic indicator of future home sales. Uh, Still higher, uh, in this they are trying to trick us here. They switched the color code on us. 18 is light blue, 17 is dark blue. Um, still shows that there's higher foot traffic currently than there, than there was same period to date last year. So it looks like um, you know there are some things showing us that the market is still gonna remain strong. This is also an interesting look. We wanted to take a look at um, rent versus buy. Um, you know, one interesting thing that Lawrence Yun, who is the uh, economist for the NAR, has recently said is that, you know, we're probably going to still see growth in terms of the housing market on the lower end because the job markets are strong. People are making money, uh, they want to buy, they want to invest, so on and so forth. But we might start to see a slowdown on the higher end because interest rates are rising. So I thought that that was interesting. And to parallel that is um, rental. You know, uh, how is it? you know, in terms of, you know, my affordability to be able to rent versus buy. So look at this chart here. This is really remarkable. When you just look at the cost of renting and how it's gone up since 1988 all the way through 2018, it's gone nothing, it's gone nowhere but up. Uh, there's been very few periods of flat or regression. Uh, it is a pretty steep curve. Um, not really great news for renters, quite frankly. Um, a good, a good, I guess a good uh, analysis of why you should continue to buy a home if you have the opportunity. This was an interesting uh, chart that Trulia put out there, rent versus buy. Um, and basically in the middle of the chart, what you see is the average home price that it would cost to buy a home. And it goes all the way back to 2013 through 18. It tells you what the average monthly rental amount is. And then what uh, the average 30 year fixed rate mortgage is at, the, uh, at that current point in time for that year. So what you can see are the percentages of how much less it would cost on a monthly basis to own a home versus rent. And it's been cheaper since 2013 until now 
to buy than it is to rent. Uh, it's declining, but needless to say, despite the fact that housing prices have increased and mortgage rates are now on the upward trend, uh, it's still cheaper to buy on an overall average U.S. national average basis uh, than it is to rent. So that's some interesting information. So let's get a little more granular and a little bit more local. Here is the units sold chart for Orange County. Again, the mother's milk of the housing market is how many homes are selling. And you can see that it's quite frankly, it's cooling off. Um, it is my opinion that we have seen the peak uh, of this last run up. It's behind us. And it is also my opinion, as was there a great article in the journal over the last week about a softening, a soft downturn. I, I hope at least, I believe maybe it's because I'm, I'm a hopeful individual, but I do believe that we're going to see a soft downturn. So um, you can see that the average, uh, the number of units sold starting to trend downward uh, versus year over year. Average price, uh, a pretty big variance in Orange County, New York, uh, from where we were last year. Uh, this downward trend that you see, that's a seasonal fluctuation. So I wouldn't worry uh, too much about that. That's just seasonal there. Uh, and and at least historically since I've been full-time in this industry, which is going on 14 years now, um, price always lags units sold, I found by at least six months, if not more. So it would not surprise me to see price increases year over year for at least the next six to 12 months, despite the fact that units sold is dropping. Um, the next slide shows us the average sold to asked ratio. In other words, at what percentage of the asking price are homes selling for on average? And we're still pretty high. You know, it's over 98% here in Orange County. Uh, so that means on average in Orange County, sellers are only negotiating off two percentage points off their asking price. So now we go south of the border to New Jersey and Sussex County, and we see a similar trend where, you know, we have some months that are up, some months that are down on a year over year basis, 18 versus 17. Um, and long story short, uh, you know, it's, it's a mixed bag. You know, we're not seeing a precipitous decline, but we're not seeing much increases uh, year over year on in the last 90 days. So again, it signals a cooling. Uh, average price, um, you know, it's kind of rough to report that down in Sussex, average price never really rocketed at any point in time like it did there in Orange County. And, you know, that's a little bit unfortunate. In previous months, uh, housing market updates, we've spoken about how there's just simply more foreclosure inventory and activity down in Sussex County, which has hence dragged down average home price. Uh, and it hasn't necessarily meant that you know, homes that are owned by mom and pop, well taken care of, well located, haven't done well in the price appreciation of this last run up. So that's something to consider when you look at these. And then, uh, you know, you take a look again at the average sold to asked ratio and, you know, a little bit below where we were in Orange County, but still hovering around the 98%. So some good information there. Um, commercial interruption here before we hear from the panelists. Uh, you know, the next housing market update is going to be November 13th uh, at 2 p.m. Uh, stay informed with us always at greenteamhq.com uh, forward slash HMU. And thanks to our sponsor, Really, which is the no fee agent to agent referral app for all of us realtors out there. So, all right. Ladies, let's uh, let's start to hear from you. Um, I'm saying that the market's cooling. Um, Karen, you're all the way on my left. Why don't we start with you? What what do you feel? What are you sensing out there? What are you seeing? Uh, troop on the ground type of thing. Um, I think there are um, less houses that are nicely done or updated, and I think the buyers have higher expectations than they did before. During the summer, everybody was rushing. Uh, to get into houses and now that we're already in the school year uh, buyers are a bit more picky than they were so things have somewhat slowed down but for different reasons yeah okay fair enough allison you want to chime in on just the overall sentiment of what you're you know experiencing out there um for excuse my voice i'm getting over a cold here um from what i've seen um, recently, I had a few delays in closings, so I have um, many of my third quarter closings didn't happen. They will be happening in fourth quarter. 
Um, but as far as the housing goes, there's still nothing out there that people actually want. They're looking for something that's not there. So, um, you know, hopefully they'll be on the market soon. <laughs> So you're still seeing an in inventory shortage, so to speak. I, I am seeing that, yeah, especially in Sussex County. Okay. So let's uh, check in with Jackie over on the New York side, then Pam will round it out with you. Jackie, are you still seeing inventory issues over in on the New York side of the border? Uh, yeah, especially in certain areas. You know, if people want certain areas, like if they want Warwick, um, especially um, anything under that 400 price point, it's sort of hard to find that's finished. You know, mm -hmm. people want more moving ready. Um, same thing as Karen was saying, I'm feeling that now since we're sort of in a school year, especially if people have families, you're in a school year, kids are going to school, holidays are coming up. Some people are just like, you know what, we're gonna wait. Yeah, yeah. We're not which, in a rush. Which is always <laughs> reflected in the reports, right? That's yeah. why you, you see these large run-ups in terms of transactions in July, August, and then September, and it dies off, but that's, those are seasonal fluctuations that happen yes. all the time in the Northeast. So I would agree with that. Yeah. Um, so Pam, uh, go ahead and say your piece on, on how you think, you know, what's happening in the market. And then I just want to check in with everybody about appraisals, you know, are appraisals coming in? Are they, I'm, I'm not hearing many problems with appraisals. I think that's always a key indicator too. So Pam, what are you seeing out there? Any general comments? Yeah, I'm echoing with everybody else that it's definitely uh, a, an inventory shortage. People are more picky. Um, even the houses that have been flipped somewhat times aren't good enough. And you're finding people with a certain dollar amount looking for things that are not in their dollar amount. So you're kind of trapped trying to find them something that will fit them. Okay. So it sounds like it's still a really good time to sell a house. Definitely. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, coming from a, a, a 10 to a 15 year perspective, I can say that it's as good of a time now as it has been in the last decade to sell a house. Um, but I would caution everybody to know that there is nothing to ultimately stop this housing market from slowing down. So probably not a bad idea to list the house in the near future if you have plans on doing it sometime in the next year. Okay, um, so Matt, let's uh, let's come over to you and check in on. So, what happened to the bond market? I I was on the golf course with uh, Jeremy Miller, um, who is uh, is our connection to you being here today. Um, and the bond market was like going crazy, and rates were uh, were increasing by the minute. It was kind of crazy. So, what's going on with all that, Matt? Well, basically what it is, is when the, um, the Fed said at the, be uh, the end of last year that they wanted to do quantitative um, tightening, essentially, they, what they were doing previously is reinvesting all of the um, you know, gains they got from the bond market back into the bond market. Mm -hmm. So then that brought their balance sheet up greatly. So they wanted to wind that balance sheet down. And yeah. so they made a plan uh, right before Janet Yellen uh, stepped down from uh, being the Fed chair. Uh, yeah. So October of last year, um, they wanted to reduce it by $10 billion. January of this year, $20 billion. April of this year, 30 July, 40 And October, which we just saw, um, 50 And that would be the last of it. That's the last um, tightening session. So they weren't going to continue to reinvest it. There's, so right now, the market we're in, there's no Fed buying into the bond market. Um, so that's why we saw those um, changes in interest rate. Like if you look back from October of last year, you'll notice the drop. January of this year, we had a pretty pretty substantial, um, or I should say, rise, a drop in the bond market, rise in rates. Um, July it wasn't that bad, but it still did drop. And then October, you know, we all kind of experienced where interest rates were. Like you said, you know, um, Jeremy, I'm sure he was getting our alerts on. Um, on October 3rd, and that's kind of the reasoning behind it. So what we're kind of seeing for the future, um, you know, at least in the upcoming months, is we're going to be ex uh, experiencing more volatility, but this is actually a more normal bond market. Um, so if there is any economic news that potentially, um, you know, would hurt bonds, um, we're going to notice it more because previously the Fed was buying back into it and softening that blow it was almost like a safety net. Um, and now there's no safety net. So if it's going to hurt, it's going to hurt. Um, but that doesn't 
you know, necessarily mean, oh, if there's more volatility to the downside, that's going to help us on the upside, right? If there's good news, it'll go up even more. Well, not really, because again, there's not that Fed juicing that when there was the good news to buy and make that increase even more. So we're expecting more volatility into the future, potentially more to the downside, but, but we're not saying it's going to be a straight downward line. Um, but, you know, potentially rates could be, um, you know, continue to get worse or, um, you know, we're hoping at least they can, um, they can stay pretty steady. It all depends on kind of what continues to happen with the Fed and their plans for rate hikes. All right. All right. Well, you know, a little bit of perspective. When I bought my first home, um, that was, I believe, 2003 or 2004, my first 30 year fixed rate was six and a half percent. And I think, Matt, we're we're probably hovering somewhere around five percent right now. Is that is that fair to say? Yep, that's a that's about right. Um, I've got I wish I wish I could get that screen share to work. I have this um chart that uh Barry uses about where thirty uh thirty year fixed rates um have been, and you know I'm looking back when you said about two thousand three, it was right about that um six six and a half percent. Today we're right on about five. You know if we look back, this is you know the lowest it's been. Um, you know it hasn't been. Um, higher than this, I should say. Since about 2009, rates have been pretty much below 5% um, since then. So, you know, people are saying it's a high interest rate market. That's kind of just, um, you know, in the short term, you know, previously before that, it was much higher. Yeah. I mean, if somebody's going to say it's a high interest rate environment that just lacks any sort of, uh, you know, look back over the last few decades, it's just looking over the last five to 10 years, maybe. Mm -hmm. Um, but, you know, I guess that the the point is, is that, you know, the largest run up the housing market ever saw was, you know, 05, 06, 07, right in there. And, and rates were pretty high back then, you know. So while I think, you know, it definitely hurts our, our friends in the mortgage industry in terms of refinance, um, at least in five or six years, they'll have a ton of refinances when rates come back down, right? I mean, <laughs> at some point it's always easier to get that refi when uh when the rates lower right exactly so you know what goes up must come down so and you know i guess one other question matt is you know how is all of this in your opinion because i mean you know the stock market has just had an unbelievable run right i mean you take a look at the dow and where it is and yeah it's it's gotten dinged a little bit in recent you know days and weeks here but for the by and large it's still just at an unbelievable level how is all of this going to impact? I mean, the Fed printing less money is not necessarily what the stock market wants. So, I mean, the, the stock market should be coming down as well, no? Um, that, that would make sense, um, you know, for the stock market to come back to a little more normal. We have seen it, you know, rallying, you know, I mean, I feel like every day I turn on CNBC and it's stocks are at all time high, stocks are at all time high. Um, you know, eventually, you know, we can't go much higher and, um, you know, things will be coming um, back down more uh, to a more normal range. Um, not saying they're going to, I'm not predicting a crash or anything crazy like that. Um, but just to come back a little more normal, which um, could potentially help bonds and help interest rates even a little bit, because when that money does come out of stocks, um, generally it will get invested into um, uh, bonds, especially when there's things like, um, you know, trade wars uh, uh, talking and everything like that. It's the uh, the flight to quality um, taking out of the riskier stock investment and going into a safer long-term investment like bonds. Yeah. And then one last question I had. Um is as far as this contagion that people have been throwing around, you know, the idea that there could be a a global contagion, um, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of messiness and there's a lot of risk around the globe. You know, uh, a lot of governments just are not in a good fiscal situation. Currencies are kind of all over the place. Um, do you do you see that being a major factor for us? I mean, you know, the United States more than ever seems like the shining city on the hill, you know. Um, mm-hmm. And by and large, we've kind of been, you know, on our own pedestal for some time now as, as it relates to the rest of the world. But globally, what do you see? Um, you know, there is a lot of kind of turmoil, especially in, in Europe and Italy, especially right now. Um, it is kind of impacting where the um, the Treasury is going right now, because uh, Barry talks about it every morning. You know, the world is kind of interconnected there. 
So, um, you know, that kind of um, makes us fluctuate a little bit, but it's, we're not expecting kind of great um, leaps and bounds um, because of that turmoil, but it does affect us. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think there's any question about it. So it's an interesting time. Uh, you know, I mentioned this uh, article from the Wall Street Journal earlier. It was called, um, I'm looking at it on my phone here, housing market position for a gentler slowdown than in 2007. Looks like it was actually written by uh, Daniel Aker of Bloomberg News. So it might be a, a Bloomberg. Uh, oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. That was by Laura Casuto. Um, so anyway, that's in the journal. I think if anybody's really looking for good guidance on what's really going to happen, this was a very good article that I personally um, agree with. I, I think that this is a very good analysis. There's some good historical analysis there. Um, so that that's something to check out. You could just Google it. I'm sure it'll come up. Housing market position for a gentler slowdown than in 2007. So, all right. Well, um, I guess that's it. Does anybody have any final questions, comments, or concerns before we go? If you do, just open up your mic and speak up. Otherwise, I'm going to start saying thank you to everybody. Matt, thanks for being here. We hope that you'll come back at some point in time. Of course. You ever need me, you know how to get in touch with me. <laughs> right, very good. So thanks for everybody being here and uh, we'll see everyone next month on the housing market update. Take care.